I'm Anil Kumar. Here is a practice video on the properties of Pascal's triangle and their relation with binomial coefficients. We have four questions here which are directly related with these properties. I'd like you to pause the video, copy the questions, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Question number one is, find an equivalent expression for 15 choose 4. 15c4. Question number two is, fill in the missing numbers of this part of Pascal's triangle. So numbers given to you are as shown here. Question number three is, find the sum of 60 choose 31 and 60 choose 32. And question number four is, calculate the sum where r goes from 0 to 7 for 7 choose r. Now, let us review the properties of Pascal's triangle, which we have learned. The first one is related to the first property. It is find an equivalent expression for 15C4. The property one is regarding symmetry. And what we learn is that in any row of Pascal's triangle, entries equidistant from each end are equal, right? So what we learned is, we'll write in a different way, NCR is equal to NCN minus R, right? So that is their value is same when we check from each end. And therefore, we could write this as equal to 15 C, 15 minus 4, right? 15 minus 4, and the result is 15 C, 11. So the equivalent expression to 15 C, 4 is 15 C, 11, right? Question number 2 is fill in the blanks, and here we are given some part of Pascal's triangle, right? So here we are using the second property, which is sum of two consecutive entries, right? So the property here which we are talking about is the sum of consecutive entries in Pascal's triangle, which is written as NCR plus NCR plus one is equal to the next row's element on the right side, which is N plus one, R plus one. Is it okay? So that is, the property which we are going to use. So use this property to fill them up. So let's use a calculator to calculate. So what we have here is, we can begin from that side, correct? So to get this number here, we have to add these two, correct? So when you add them, what do you get? So we have 120, 120 plus 210, that gives you 330, right? So we get a number here, 330. Similarly, we can get the next, which is 210 plus 252, and that is equals to 462, right? So we get 462. Now, how do you get this one? Now, to get that number, we know that let us do some algebraic calculations on the side that this number plus 126 will give us 252. And therefore, that number should be 252 take away 126. Is that okay? So that is the number we are looking for. So you can borrow and then do, right? So this becomes 4 and 12 and 2. And that number is also 126, correct? So this number here is also 126. So let's write down this number, 126, correct? So that is how you can enter the missing entries of a Pascal's triangle. The property number two has been used here, which is sum of two consecutive entries, right? So the property name here is sum of consecutive entries. Okay, the next one here is find the sum of 
60 choose 31 and 60 choose 32. Well, the sum of this should be equals to using the above property 61, the next row, 61 choose 32, correct? So that is the sum. So you can also use calculator to calculate the value, but this answer is good enough, okay? So that is how we can find the sum of two consecutive entries in Pascal's triangle, right? So that is the 60th row, which gives you uh, and 31st column, correct? The sum of 60th row, 31st column, and 32nd column entries will give you the number in the 61st row over 32nd column, right? Question number four here is calculate. This is the summation of seven choose R, where R changes from zero to seven. So that is the sum of all the coefficients in the seventh row, right? So this is sum of entries, you can say sum of seventh row entries of Pascal's triangle, correct? And as you know, from the property, we know that should be 2 to the power of 7, correct? So that is 2 to the power of 7. So let's calculate 2 to the power of 7. It is 2 exponent 7 equals to 128. So it is 128, correct? So we have used another property of Pascal's triangle and their relation with binomial coefficients to find the result. So we'll have few more practice so that we understand these basic properties and move on with some interesting questions. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that was useful for you. Thank you and all the best.